Hi everyone, this is Muhammad Irfan from Burden College. In this video, I'll talk about NetworkX, one of the most widely used network or graph programming packages in Python. If you are like me, and if you have used some other network tools like Gaffy, there were times when we thought, wish I could do that. That was because we are at the mercy of those tools like Gaffy on what we can do and what we cannot do. Here's the good news. NetworkX gives us immense power on what we can accomplish using our graphs on networks. In this video, I'll talk about three things. First, I'll show you the very basics of NetworkX, how to create a graph, how to add nodes and edges to that graph, how to add attributes to those nodes and edges, things like this. In the second part, I'll show you how to visualize that network. And in the third part, I'll show you how to implement some of the most widely used network models, like Ardorshani random graph models, and Barabasi Albert preferential attachment network models. One thing I'll not talk about in this video is graph algorithms. I'll leave it for another video. So let's go to my computer screen and get started with the very basics of network X. Before we get started with coding, I think it would be useful to take a look at the documentation of NetworkX. For that, you can go to your browser and type networkx.org slash documentation, or you can simply Google for NetworkX documentation. It will take you to this website where you see how to install NetworkX. Uh, for most of you, this one single line of command, pip install NetworkX, this will do the installation. However, I would recommend you to use Anaconda's Python distribution because it comes prepackaged with NetworkX and many other Python packages. So if you are using Anaconda, you don't need to install NetworkX separately. On this website, you also see there's a tutorial section. It's actually a pretty good tutorial. And in this video, I have borrowed a lot from this uh, tutorial. There's also a reference section here. If you are doing any project using NetworkX, you'll be looking up this reference a lot. Here, if you scroll down, you'll see there's an algorithm section. A wide variety of graph algorithms have already been implemented in NetworkX. All of these algorithms are ready to go off the shelf. And down below, you also see there's the graph generator section. Here you can see a rich set of graph generators have been implemented. In this video, I'll talk about two random graph generators. With that, I think uh, we are ready to dive into coding. For coding, I'll be using Visual Studio Code. Feel free to use any IDE of your choice if you are using Visual Studio Code. Make sure that the appropriate Python uh, distribution is showing up at the bottom left corner. In my case, it is Anaconda's Python distribution. Of course, you can change it anytime by clicking on it and then selecting the desired Python distribution from this list. We'll start by importing NetworkX as NX. We'll then import a couple of other Python packages. One is matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. This would be useful for visualizing the graph and also for doing some plotting. Next, we'll also import a Python's random number generator. And after that, we'll create an empty undirected graph. The code for it is g equals nx.graph. Here, g is the graph object that we'll be using all the time. Instead of creating an undirected graph, if you want to create a directed graph, the analogous code would be nx.digraph. Okay. We'll then add a few nodes to our graph object g. There are two basic ways of doing it. One is we can say g.addNode0. Here, 0 is the node object that we want to add to our graph. Uh, of course, 0 is a number. But in general, the node object doesn't need to, need to be a number. It can be a string. It can be a tuple. It can be any hashable Python object. Okay. There's a second way of adding nodes to a graph. In particular, adding a bunch of nodes to a graph. We can say g.addNodes from. Then we can supply it a list of nodes that we want to add. In this case, one, two, and three. These nodes would be added in addition to the previously added node zero that we did in the previous line. Okay. So the main use of this second way of adding nodes is when we have a huge number of nodes that we want to add to our graph. For example, if you have 50,000 nodes, there's no way you are going to write one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, up until 50,000. And a better uh, way of doing it would be uh, by using range, okay? Next, I'll talk about how to add edges to our graph. Uh, again, there are two basic ways of adding edges to a graph. One is we can say g.addEdge 
in this case we are saying 0 comma 1 this will add an undirected edge between nodes 0 and 1 there's a second way of adding edges uh, we can say g dot add edges from then we are giving it a list of edges that we want to add and each edge in this list is represented as a tuple so for example the first tuple is 1 comma 2 this will add an edge between nodes 1 and 2 an undirected edge of course then the second tuple is 2 3 the third one is 3 1 so in effect we are basically adding a triangle between 1 2 and 3 uh, to our graph and this triangle would be added on top of the previously added edge between 0 and 1 okay next uh, if you want to uh, access the number of nodes uh, in our graph you'll say g dot number of nodes and similarly there's a g dot number of edges for getting the number of edges in our graph okay and after that i'll talk about four views that network x provides us views are basically objects defined on top of dictionaries we know that a dictionary can be modified dynamically so these views reflect this dynamic modification of a dictionary and by the way uh, dictionaries happen to be the bread and butter of the behind the scene data structures in network x the first view uh, is g dot nodes at a very high level you can think of this view as a collection of nodes that we have in our graph uh, in particular we have this node 0 1 2 3 these four nodes so g dot nodes represents this collection of four nodes similarly g dot edges is the collection of uh, four edges that we have in our graph g dot degree this view gives you the degree of each node in our graph okay and the last view is g dot adj this gives us the adjacency data structure in our graph this one is a little bit complicated compared to the other one so what i'll do now is i'll run this program uh, this visualization is the effect of some uh, code segment that i have later on i'll get to that in the second part of this video so first of all we see the number of nodes equals four this is basically the output coming from this print statement the second one is number of edges equals four again this is coming from the next line of code and uh, then we see the four views g dot nodes the node view is zero one two three it's basically a list of nodes uh, that we have in our graph and the second view is g dot edges okay so here you can see that it is represented as a list of tuples okay each tuple rep represents an edge like 0 1 is an edge 1 2 is the second edge 1 3 uh, 2 3 so these are the edges and you can relate to it by looking at this visualization the next view is g dot degree here it's a list of tuples once again so the first element in each uh, tuple 0 in this case 0 represents the node object and the second element in each tuple represents the degree of that node okay so it's saying uh, 0 has a degree of 1 1 has a degree of 3 node 2 has a degree of 2 and so on okay again you can relate to it by looking at this visualization okay and the last uh, uh, the last view is g dot adj as i've mentioned this is a little bit complicated it's a dictionary of dictionaries of dictionaries oh boy so there are three levels of dictionaries at the first level we have the keys are uh, basically uh, the nodes for example 0 is a node so 0 is a key at the first level dictionary and at the second level dictionary we have the neighbors of 0 and in our case we only have uh, one neighbor for 0 that is node 1 so that's the key in the second level dictionary and this uh, neighbor is mapping to a third level dictionary uh, which is currently empty it's it's going to represent the uh, attributes of this uh, relationship between 0 and 1 so we have an edge between 0 and 1 but we haven't added any attribute to this edge as a result uh, this dictionary is empty later on when we add some attributes to this edge 0 1 we'll see that uh, this at uh, the attribute name and value this name value uh, would be represented as a dictionary uh, right here so this is basically uh, the representation of the adjacency structure in our graph as a dictionary of dictionaries of dictionaries if it seems complicated i would just mention that you can live a very happy and fulfilling life without ever having to use g.adj i'll show you how okay 
so let me uh, clear out this output. I'll next talk about uh, how to add attributes to our uh, nodes and edges. There are two attributes that I want to add to each node. One of these attributes is the node's smoking status. True means smoker, false means not smoker, okay? And the second attribute I want to add is the node's body weight. And I want to add uh, this smoking status arbitrarily and the body weights randomly. This is how we can do it. So here I have a loop for i in g.nodes. So basically this loop is going through the nodes in our graph. And obviously g.nodes is the view that I just uh, showed you. And by the way, this is the number one most widely used graph operation, going through the nodes of the graph, okay? So for each node, we are saying g.nodes bracket i, okay? Then bracket smoking, so this is new. This is smoking in quotation, this is a string. This is basically the node's smoking status or smoking attribute. And I'm setting it to false. Initially, all of the nodes are non-smokers. Then this, for the second attribute, I'm writing g.nodes i weight. And once again, weight is basically the uh, weight attribute of each node. And I'm setting it to a random number between 100 and 200, okay? Next, uh, once uh, the loop is finished, I'm arbitrarily setting node one's smoking status to be true. Node one became a smoker now. Okay, next I'll talk about how to add attributes to uh, the edges in our graph. For that, I've written a loop for E in G dot edges. Once again, uh, this uh, loop going through all of the edges in our graph is a widely used operation. So for each edge E, we are saying G dot edges E, and the strength, uh, this one is the edge attribute. Uh, we are saying equals round. We are rounding up a random number uh, to two digits after the decimal uh, point, okay? So first I'm going to uh, uncomment this line of code and run it and show you uh, the node data. So again, you'll see the code hanger graph appearing here, the visualization, g.nodes.data. It represents all the data about each of the nodes that we have in our graph. So it, it is represented as a list of tuples, okay? So the first item in the tuple identifies the node. In this case, for example, here you have node zero. And it's saying the uh, smoking status of node zero is false and the weight is 174. This 174 is a randomly picked number between 100 and 200. So the first element of each tuple is the node object and the second element of each tuple is a dictionary of attribute names and attribute values, okay? Next, I'm going to uh, comment this node data and I'm going to uncomment the edges data. And I'm going to run this code and uh, will uh, the same code hanger graph appears here. So it's basically saying uh, the strength of this edge between zero and one is 0.25, which is a randomly picked number. The strength between one and two is 0 0.07 and so on, okay? Next, I'm going to show you uh, the output of g.adj. So it's the dictionary of dictionaries of dictionaries. I said that we don't really need to use it, but it's good to understand what g.adg does. So I just uncommented this line and I'm going to run this program again. And you'll see that g.adg represents the same information as g.edges.data in a different format. So this is the uh, g.adg dictionary of dictionaries of dictionaries. At the first level of dictionary, you have the node zero. And the second level of dictionary, you have the neighbors of node zero. In this case, we have just one neighbor, that is node one. And then the third level of dictionary, it identifies the relationship attributes between zero and one. In this case, it's a dictionary where uh, the uh, key is the attribute name strength and the value is 0.68, okay? You can see that the value changed from the previous run because we are randomly picking this uh, uh, strength, okay? And you can relate to the other uh, other items in this dictionary of dictionaries of dictionaries by comparing it with g.edges.data, okay? So once again, let me clear out the output. 
one of the powers of network X and sometimes one of the confusing aspects of network X is that uh, there are multiple ways of doing exactly the same thing. And this is what I'm going to show you. I'll show you three ways of iterating through the neighbors of a node. For that, I'm uncommenting this code segment. So the first way, and by the way, this is the number two most widely used operation in graphs, that is iterating through the neighbors of a node, okay? And I'm just uh, picking node two arbitrarily here, and I'm going to iterate through all of the neighbors of node two. The first way is uh, we can use a loop that says for nbr in g dot adj bracket two. So here we are using the adj uh, adjacency uh, view, and we are printing the neighbor here. The second way, which is actually equivalent to the first way, is we can say for nbr in g bracket two. You can see that we have just uh, omitted dot adj here. Instead, we just said g bracket two. And in fact, it is, it is defined exactly the same way as g.adj. It's also a graph view, and it's going to give you the same output as the previous uh, loop. And the third way is we can say for nbr in g.neighbors parenthesis two. So make note of parenthesis two versus bracket two in the previous two uh, code segments, okay? So we are iterating through the neighbors of g, and we are printing the neighbor, okay? You can see that all three loops gave us the same output, one, three, one, three, one, three. So if you ask me this question, which, which one should I use? Should I use g.adj or simply g or g.neighbors? To answer that question, there's one thing, one really important thing about coding called readability of code. In that regard, if somebody sees this code segment for nbr in g.neighbors parenthesis two, as soon as they look at this g.neighbors in parenthesis two, they know that uh, you are iterating through the neighbors of node two. And for that reason, I would say that writing the third way, going with the third way, is basically the right way to do things, okay? In this segment, I'll talk about how to visualize our graph. To visualize our graph, first of all, uh, we'll uh, create a figure by saying plt.figure in parenthesis one, that is we are giving the figure a number, number one, and uh, there's a simple one line of code that we can use to visualize our uh, graph. We can just say nx.draw underscore network x in parenthesis, we are giving the graph object g. However, we'd like to do something a little bit more elaborate. We'd like to color each node by their smoking status, red for smoker, green for non-smoker. We'd also like to resize the node according to their body weight. To do things like this, we'll create a color map list. We'll also create a size map list, okay? And then we'll go through each node in our uh, graph and we'll be appending to size map the node's body weight times two. So this times two is kind of arbitrary, is just to magnify the number. And then we are saying if the node is a smoker, then we are adding to color map, this is string red. And otherwise we are adding to the color map, this is string green, okay? Uh, I'll just briefly mention that Network X recognizes these color strings, the basic uh, colors like red, green, blue, all of these basic colors. And then we are going to uh, create a layout, graph layout by saying nx.draw underscore network X. We are supplying it the graph object G. We are saying the node color is this color map. Node size is represented by this size map. And then we are saying position, that is pause equals nx.spring layout, which is a graph layout, where uh, if two nodes are connected by an edge, they attract each other. And if two nodes are not connected by an edge, they repel each other. So this, uh, uh, these forces of attractions and repulsions here will play out for 1000 iterations. And finally, we'll get a graph layout. And uh, then uh, we are saying, the arrows equals false means that we don't want to show any edge arrows. And with labels equals true means we are going to show the node labels, okay? So this uh, function nx draw, draw network x, it'll create a graph layout, but it's not going to show the graph immediately on your screen. To show the graph on, on our screen, we'll have to say plt.show. That is, uh, this line of code will show the figure one on our screen, 
Okay, so let me run this code again. You'll see that this visualization that we have been seeing all along, uh, this is coming from this uh, code segment. Okay, and another thing you uh, probably noticed is that the coat hanger, the location or the positioning of the coat hanger was changing all the time. Is because this uh, spring layout algorithm starts with a random initial position of all of these nodes, then the forces of attractions and repulsions play out, and finally we get a, a visualization. Okay. First, I'm going to talk about how to create an ardor shiny random graph and how to plot the degree distribution for that random graph. To do that, we are creating our second figure here. Then we are creating a graph object g underscore ardor uh, by saying uh, it's equal to nx dot ardor underscore rainy underscore graph. So this is basically network access ardor shiny random graph generator. It takes two parameters. The first parameter is how many nodes we want. In this case, let's say we want 1000 nodes. The second parameter is with what probability are we going to connect any two nodes? Here we are going to connect any two nodes with the probability of 0.1. Okay. Then we are creating a list of the degrees in our graph by saying uh, degrees equals, this is a list comprehension that says g underscore ardors under uh, dot uh, degree. That is, we are using the degree view of our graph object, bracket i that says the degree of uh, node i for i in all of the nodes in our graph. So this will be a list of degrees of all the nodes in our graph. Okay. Then we are putting the x axis label to be k, which is the typical notation for the degree, and y axis label, label of p underscore k, again typical notation for uh, the, uh, the proportion of nodes that have the degree k. In this case, we are interpreting it as a frequency of nodes that have degree k. Then we are setting the title of that plot. And this is the histogram plot uh, that plots the degrees. And uh, these are the beans in that histogram that go from the minimum degree to the maximum degree. Okay. We can do a similar plot for Barabasi Albert net, uh, preferential attachment network. And uh, to do that, we are creating our third figure. We then say g underscore Barabasi, this is our graph object, equals nx dot uh, barabasi underscore albert underscore graph. This is network access uh, preferential attachment network generator. It also takes two parameters. The first parameter is how many nodes we want. In this case, we want 1000 nodes. And remember that in barabasi albert preferential attachment networks, uh, uh, nodes are born one at a time. So this is a growing network model. Upon birth, a node forms a certain number of links with pre-existing nodes. The second parameter tells you with how many pre-existing nodes a newly born node forms links. Also relevant here, these links are formed proportional to the pre-existing nodes degrees. In other words, the high degree nodes are more likely to get more edges. Okay. Next, uh, we are creating the degrees list and setting the x level, y level, the title, and finally we are plotting the histogram plot of the degree frequencies. Okay. And the last line shows us these uh, two figures. So let me run this code and show you the output. Here you see uh, the two plots. Uh, figure one represents the degree distribution of our ardor shiny random graph, and figure two is the degree distribution of our Barabasi Albert preferential attachment network. And there's a stark contrast between these two degree distributions, uh, which is a topic in network science. Uh, we know that the degree distribution for ardor shiny random graph it follows Poisson distribution, whereas the degree distribution for Barabasi Albert networks, it follows power law degree distribution. Okay. So with that, I'll conclude this video lecture here. Thank you for watching.